Good morning, everyone. Um, UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk, today called for concrete measures to halt the human rights violations and abuses that continue to endanger reconciliation and peace in Ethiopia. The High Commissioner urges the parties to the conflict to halt ongoing hostilities and to resolve difference through peaceful means. It's essential that the authorities take all feasible steps to protect civilians, prevent further violations, and ensure there are full investigations to bring those responsible to justice. Now, as you will have seen, the UN Human Rights Office has today issued an update analyzing the human rights situation across Ethiopia from January 2023 to January 2024. Now, some of the points in this update include violent conflicts, particularly in the Amhara and Oromia regions, led to serious human rights violations and abuses in 2023. In the northern Tigray region, there was a significant improvement in the human rights situation following the cessation of hostilities agreement in November 2022. But concerns persist regarding ongoing violations by members of the Eritrean Defence Forces. In 2023, at least 1,351 civilians were killed in Ethiopia in attacks reportedly carried out by government forces, Eritrean troops, anti-government militias, and some unknown actors. And of the civilians killed, 740 of these were in Amhara. The use of unmanned aerial vehicles by government forces resulted in 248 civilian deaths between the 4th of August and the 31st of December 2023 and destroyed vital infrastructure, including schools and hospitals, raising concerns about the extent of compliance of these strikes with international law. Overall, the update records 594 incidents of human rights violations and abuses affecting 8,253 victims. Now, that's a 56% increase compared with 2022. According to the update, state actors were reportedly responsible for some 70% of the violations, while non-state actors accounted for some 22%. Fano insurgents and their allies killed at least 52 civilians in Amhara and destroyed civilian property, attacked medical personnel and destroyed ambulances in violence targeted at government personnel. The update also uh, details an attack on the 29th of January 2024 in which at least 89 civilians were killed, reportedly by government troops, in Merawi town near Bahirda, the regional capital of Amhara. Now, the High Commissioner welcomed the fact that the authorities did not extend the state of emergency, which was declared on the 4th of August 2023 and expired on the 3rd of June this year. Now, we are urging the authorities to release immediately those detained under the former state of emergency if they've not been charged under currently valid law and tried promptly and fairly. And, of course, those who have not been charged should also be released immediately. The update acknowledges the Ethiopian government's efforts to promote transitional justice and prevent violence against women and children, as well as its openness to engage in dialogue to resolve the fighting in the Amhara region. Such progressive measures require sustained commitment, the update notes. Now, I'll leave it there, but just to briefly add, given that the update covers the period from the January the 2023 to January this year, we are, of course, continuing to monitor developments and incidents. And to just give you a very brief overview, the situation in Amhara and Oromia regions remains worrying with ongoing fighting between government forces against Amhara militia and FANO and the Oromo Liberation Army, respectively. Now, one of the points in the update is that progress on accountability for human rights violations and abuses linked to conflicts has been limited, despite repeated commitments by the government. Now, it's clear that if grievances are not addressed and accountability not pursued, the risk increases of further conflict. And among the update's recommendations is the implementation of a comprehensive, inclusive and participatory transitional justice process. The Ethiopia's Council of Ministers adopted a transitional justice policy in April this year and its implementation was launched on the 9th of May. And of course the UN Human Rights Office is ready to continue to continue accompanying the government on this. Now there are lots more details in the extensive update um, and I'll leave it there. Thank you.